What's up folks? Today we're talking about the reason you should not throw away your coffee grounds because they can help us solve the world's water crisis. Um, and it's a little bit of a, of a sweet spot for Farbo and I. A couple episodes back we mentioned or I guess used our first article from our alma mater, George Mason University. In this case we're hitting even closer to home by going back to the department that we studied in and where we met each other at yeah. the Department of Mechanical Engineering um, with Professor jeff moran who happened to be one of our favorite professors while we were there at mason so um again if you didn't think we were biased enough the last time we talked about george mason you're Buckle definitely up. gonna it's, think there's some, yeah. some bias here now when we're talking about one of our favorite professors from the program that we both graduated from who actually does research pretty adjacent to the research, research that we were, that we were working on when we met each other so yeah I just wanted to put those disclaimers out there so no one comes after us and said, "Oh no, I I know you went to Mason. I know you I know you like Dr. Moran and come and try and tarnish our <laughs> reputations because of that." <laughs> Look, it it took 3 years for us to talk about our alma mater. And then finally we get to feature something from the department of the school that we worked on. So of course we're going to be a little biased. Like, come on. You you have to be. But that doesn't discount the fact that they're doing some really cool stuff. It's going to have a great positive impact on the world. Yeah, and then let's just kind of contextualize the problem that they're trying to solve here, which is our water problem. Yep. A lot of times, and I've heard this saying be used colloquially a lot more, is like the, in let's say the most recent industrial revolution, whoever had the most oil, those are the folks that ended up prospering. Those are the folks that ended up, um, you know, ending up, very very lucrative situation think about like all these super rich saudi princes who inherited oil or folks in alaska um who get paid every single year from the government because they they've they live in this land that's so rich with natural resources well the most valuable natural resource a lot of people say moving forward and the most the one that will become the most scarce especially with the increasing size of the population in the world is water is clean drinkable water um and dirty water is a huge problem around the world because it's bad for our health, it's bad for the environment, and any way we try to clean bodies of water is very, very expensive. Most of them don't work that well, and most of them have other knock-on effects to the environment. So basically, we don't have that much clean water. The percentage of it that we try to clean, we don't do that well. It costs a lot of money, and it has other knock-on effects that we're worried about. It feels like a lose-lose-lose situation. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting um, again, just how big of a this problem this is. Uh, the UN has made it one of their. What, what was it that we talked about a couple episodes ago with the UN's missions for like the clean world? I think global global sustainability goals. There you go. The, their global sustainability goals. One of them, one of the most important ones, is clean water, because they they're already predicting that, like you said, it's going to be one of our most scarce resources. And you're absolutely right. Like there's there's solutions that exist. Um. And if, if there's this like Venn diagram of uh, being too expensive and potentially having, you know, byproducts that hurt the environment even more, a lot of them fall uh, right in, in, in the middle. So that means they, it's a crossover of both. But I think where like affordable solutions would be the most impactful are in societies or communities right now where they don't have access to clean water, right? So like water might become more scarce for us in the future where we have to be more conscious about how much we're flushing our toilet or how long of a shower we take. Um, but there are a lot of communities right now that still don't have access to clean water and there are filtration solutions, but they're just too pricey for them to use at scale. So if there was something that was affordable um, that could scale and still provide high quality filtration, then that could, like as of today, have a great immediate impact. Yeah, and I think one of the awesome things that this team from George Mason has done is they take a lot of these different pain points, right? Mm -hmm. the, the pain point that it's really, really expensive, it isn't that effective, it's harmful for the environment. They took all those three main, main pain points and used them 
to design the three main features of, of what their coffee bots are so awesome at. And I don't want to beat around the bush too much because I've kind of, I've <laughs> kind of let Spoiled the secrets it, yeah. slip out by using the name uh, coffee bots, but they made these little tiny cleaning nanobots made from used coffee grounds. Um, I think the scientific term they use in the paper is SPG spent coffee, coffee grounds. grounds. <laughs> um, I, I love the scientific term there, but um, they're using spent coffee grounds, which are biodegradable, by yes. the way, um, using those as a substrate by which they basically do a bunch of nano engineering to it, cover it in a bunch of na- different nanoparticles that help them be able to manipulate these part, you know, manipulate these tiny, let's call them like coffee bots, super bots um, through the water, manipulate them to help direct them to areas that need to be clean and then to retrieve them after mm-hmm. they're done. Um, coffee, spent coffee grounds are super abundant. They're everywhere. Um, that Especially really addresses the, the expensive part. Um, and then they do specific nano engineering to make sure that these things work really, really, really well. So they addressed the harming the environment part by making them biodegradable and by making them easily retrievable. They address the part that it's super, super expensive right now by using something that is basically a waste product from a lot of people's favorite drink every single morning. And then they use like the, the state of the art technology part, the nano engineering to make sure that they worked really, really well at cleaning water as well. Which again, like there's a lot of scientists and researchers out there who engineer something just to engineer it or discover something just to discover it, or they make an incremental improvement that doesn't really align with the pain point of what's out there in the real world. I, I don't hate those researchers, but it really, it, it, it really you feels to, to me see a real impact. In yeah. The world. It you feels like a little bit of a, of a waste of like a lot of energy and effort. If you're not solving a real problem out there in the world, Yeah, what Dr. Moran's group has done here is solve a very real problem and basically Absolutely. solve all three aspects of the problem in one fell swoop. And I gotta be honest with you. Uh, when, when I'm thinking about material or a product to use for a new novel application, spent coffee ground is not something that comes to mind. But it's kind of interesting because a couple of years ago, Ford announced that they were partnering with McDonald's to take their spent coffee grounds and make like high performance composites out of it yeah. for their headlights. And then now we're seeing this coffee bot that can pick up oil spills. And I, I think it's also worth noting that, by the way, the idea of coffee being used to clean up oil is not new either. It's it's something that's been around and investigated. And funny enough, by the way, as I was doing my research, I came across this like rough video that was definitely taken by like some handheld camera of a mechanic seven years ago. He's like, yeah, I got an oil spill on the ground. No need to go to the hardware store. Just go to like the diner down the street, grab some coffee grounds, throw it on the ground, come back in the morning. It's absorbed. It washed away. It's good for the environment. So like th- these ideas have been around, but what's really uh, pushing the state of the art here is the fact that these coffee bots can move, right? Yeah. And in addition to that, like you kind of hinted at earlier, is that they've been, uh, they've been, are we spilling the sauce here or are we, we going to extend it out? They've been functionalized yeah. so that they can do more than just collect oil. Um, they can clean the water to a, to a certain extent that's, that hasn't been done before. Oh, well, yeah, let's, we, we've beat around the bush enough. Let's jump into the secret sauce, the, yeah. the secret behind this technology, what makes it work, what are the ingredients in the secret sauce here? Um, the first one that I'm going to call out here, like you mentioned, is the fact that they're using old coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are known um, to be an excellent agent at helping clean up oil spills and remove other contaminants from clean water because of their, I think it's, they've got like a really porous surface that helps them adsorb molecules. It basically means they get pollutant molecules to, they, they suck it into the surface and then it's able to retain them there and keep them there. Um, so a suction cup that's just floating around the water, basically a giant or a really, really small suction cup that's floating around the water, sucking up tiny particles. Um, but then you mentioned it, they, they functionalized these particles using two main ingredients, the first of which is these iron oxide particles, which allows them to basically treat these coffee, coffee grounds as like little magnetic robots that mm-hmm. they're able to control and move around the water. Um, and th- that's really valuable in that you can use it to direct these coffee bots toward a coffee, towards a spill. And we also mentioned it earlier, but it, it makes for really, really easy retrieval of it once you're done. Obviously... Um, unless you like drinking dirty coffee ground water, <laughs> like if you spilled a bunch of coffee or I guess used a bunch of coffee bots out in a pond to clean after a chemical spill, back. 
you you don't want these coffee bots to clean up all the you know suck up all the bad chemicals and then just continue to float there in the yeah. pond that kind of defeats the purpose then you've still got the contaminant particles in there and you've also added sh- shredded up coffee grounds that's not a win so by functionalizing these with iron um they're able to make them magnetic so that they can retrieve them very easily it literally just takes using a magnet the same way that you use a magnet to control them yeah you can use a magnet to pull them out of the water and then what you're left with is clean water um, in addition to the adsorption to oils, I think it's worth noting that spent coffee ground is actually hydrophobic too. Okay. So that it's not... Um, sucking up the water. Exactly. It's not sucking up the water. It's sucking, sucking up, up the oil. oil, which is exactly what you want it to do. That's awesome. And um, you're absolutely right. The, the magnetic portion allows you to round them up when you're done with them. But what Dr. Moran and, and the team realized while they were doing this research is that if you're able to move around the coffee solution, you're able to pick up oil much more efficiently than if you, you know, like the previous research, um, previous folks have done before, uh, just leaving it there and letting it sit. So now you're able to clean it up faster and retrieve it more effectively, which makes this uh, more desirable for a solution that you would actually use in the real world. So that's already super impressive. But then you have this next layer of um, water cleaning that comes in the form of dyes. So um, chemical plants, manufacturers dump a lot of their pollutants into rivers and whatnot. So if we had a way of extracting those dyes and pulling them out, it would be great. Now, unfortunately, a lot of solutions that can break down those dyes, they themselves are harmful for the environment. Mm -hmm. So it's like, shoot, am I really willing to just like risk the environment in a different way by just cleaning up these dyes? No, right. You yeah. you would want you want to have a silver bullet solution, ideally. And and so what they've done here is right. They've created a platform. This platform is SCGs, spent mm-hmm. coffee grounds, plus iron oxide nanoparticles that make these spent coffee grounds or these coffee bots magnetic. Right. Um, so they can manipulate them, and then they say, well, if we've already been able to add iron oxide nanoparticles to this, why don't we also use the same green chemistry method to nano assemble other particles onto there that can help us treat and remove specific chemicals so like you were mentioning methylene blue is a very common dye in uh, industrial wastewater that ends up getting polluted into our seawater in the ocean they added ascorbic acid which is just vitamin c i think they add vitamin c which is like a very environmentally friendly version of these chemicals you were mentioning that you know, instead of just treating methylene blue and getting rid of it and causing another environmental issue, the vitamin C doesn't cause another environmental issue. It's eco-friendly. It's commonly found, actually, yeah. And they're able to functionalize these coffee bots, adding the ascorbic acid to it, which allows them to be even more effective at effective, you know, removing chemicals like methylene blue. And one of the things that I think is awesome there, and uh, very similar to the research we worked on in college, is I assume that this nano assembly method that they have to add these nanoparticles onto the spent spent coffee grounds to make coffee bots, I assume they could use a number of different functionalizing chemicals, right? If they they are able to find an eco friendly chemical that helps clean up another type of chemical spill, they could also assemble those types onto there to make sure that you've got coffee bots that are specialized to do certain types of cleanup and are really really effective at it. Yeah, absolutely. And again, uh, something else I want to point out from the research i was doing uh it's interesting i did not know what kind of relationship there was between absorbic acid and uh dyes but i i went down the rabbit hole and i realized that there's actually like a long history of people that dye their hair and they, they have like you know a sense of scalp or very fragile hair and they don't want to use the, the strippers that mm-hmm. you know um, are alkaline based they would use absorbic acid or just vitamin c and work it into their head with dish soap and after about an hour or so it would strip all that out so it to me it's really fascinating to see like what um some people have been using as like a trade secret or or like a industry secret to do maybe you know just your average tasks for cleanup and now it's being incorporated to create this potentially you know life-changing solution for millions of people um so yeah, that was really cool to see. And another thing I want to point out is this is one of those uh, articles that really benefits from folks that are enjoying it, going to the article and watching the videos. Uh, the researchers have provided uh, this demonstration of a vial of liquid, of, of water that is contaminated with the dye, 
with coffee bots inside. And over the course of 40 minutes or 60 minutes, you get to see it become cleaner and cleaner and cleaner to the point that it's just pure water. So that was really cool for me to see. Highly recommend our listeners to go and check it out. They also, uh, in another video that we've got linked in the article and the show notes, they've got uh, a video showing the like precise magnetic control of these coffee bots mm-hmm. as well. They were able to spell GMU, which is the, the name of the college that Farbode and I went to and yeah. the, that they're all researching at. So again, it's them you know, they're, they're kind of flexing. They're kind of showing off. They're, they're, but they're exercising different uh, or showing off the, the different levels of functionality that this has. Again, to go back and address the three big pain points that exist right now with trying to clean up polluted water, which are that they're expensive, they don't work well, and they harm the environment. They, again, go back to demonstrate we have something that's low cost and easy to manufacture. We have something that works really, really effectively, and we have something that won't harm the environment, which I think is, is, is super cool, which is why, why we wanted to cover it. Yeah. And the ne- the next steps um, for the team, I-, I think, are pretty interesting as well. They, I-, I didn't see it in the article, but I think I saw it in one of the videos. They were hinting at microplastic cleanup as well. Um, you know, like just like you mentioned, this coffee bot is kind of like a platform now that can be uh, upgraded or modified to target specific pollutants that you'd like to pick up. Microplastics are becoming more and more of a hot topic in the field of you know, environmental protection and pollution um, because of how plastics are becoming more and more intertwined with everything in our lives from clothing to, um, you know, I, th- I think they're saying everyone has microplastics in their bloodstream at this point. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how this plays out and how this grows now that this uh, research is published and other researchers are going to be able to build off of it as well. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just think about, like we said, that things that we use to clean and purify water today, not just an oil spill out in an open body of water. I'm thinking also about the water purification that happens in, you know, the tap water that makes Mm -hmm. it in through the spot in our home. You know, we, we use things like chlorine, um, which are used to get rid of bacteria, used to get rid of viruses and other microorganisms. I'm wondering if they can help specialized coffee bots to do things like, you know, disinfection of the drinking water um, without chlorine because chlorine is known to cause harm to us especially while showering because it like gets in your lungs and gets yeah. in your skin and gets in your hair um, chlorine is not great for us in the water but it's a necessary evil because it's a lot better than having bacteria viruses and other microorganisms i'm wondering if you know similar to chlorine or maybe another chemical coffee bots can be used to replace one of these stringent chemicals that's being used in our water purification process today that we all end up consuming, whether we like to or not, or you end up spending a lot of money on a filter to get rid of it. I'm wondering if coffee bots can become the low cost, um, really effective, and really environmentally friendly alternative. But in this case, not just environmentally friendly, because it's not just out in the wild. I'm thinking in our closed loop uh, drinking water scenario, if it can become more human friendly as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you say you give us a little Eli 5 to wrap up? Yeah, I would love to. Um, Folks, don't throw away your coffee grounds. Don't throw them away. I promise I'm going to tell you why. They're going to solve our water problem. Um, Imagine if you could take your old coffee grounds, the stuff that's left over after you make your coffee, and you could turn it into tiny little robots that can clean our dirty water. Dirty water is a huge problem around the world. It's bad for our health. It's bad for our environment. And the ways that we try to clean water today are really expensive. They don't work well, and they harm the environment even more. So this team from George Mason University found out a way to make little tiny robots out of coffee, spent coffee grounds. Um, they use nano engineering to make them be able to swim around, ro- swim around water, collect up bad stuff like oil and harmful chemicals, and then they can use a magnet to pull them out and clean the water. They work really, really well. They're not expensive at all, and they're great for the environment, which you know basically, make, basically means Starbucks, McDonald's, all these people, diners that have a bunch of spent coffee grounds, espresso addicts, you might be sitting on a treasure trove in the future of you know this this awesome material that we want to help clean up the environment. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Dr. Moran and team, thank you for giving us this article to talk about. Uh, shout out GMU. Shout out Mechanical Engineering Department at yeah. GMU. Uh, and to the folks listening, thank you for listening. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>